hi everyone in today's video lecture now uh, we will be looking into how metallic properties melting point and boiling point varies for transition elements in a given series right so basically we would be looking into the trend of metallic properties melting point and boiling point right and we'll also be looking into something known as enthalpy of atomization right enthalpy of atomization how does enthalpy of at atomization varies for transition elements right so metallic properties when we talk about metallic properties we know that metallic properties are metals are good conductors of heat and electricity they are malleable they are ductile right they are hard right and they are strong all these are metallic properties so we would be looking into the reason for these metallic properties we know that many metals are good conductor of heat and electricity because they possess free electrons right free mobile electrons now if you look at the electronic configuration of transition elements right all the transition this is the first see this this is the first series transition elements similarly we have second third series transition elements you have the, look at the outermost electronic configuration that is the valence shell electronic configuration the outermost shell possesses two electrons or in some cases one electron right and we know that there is something known as ionization energy and ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove these outermost electrons right from the valence shell so since they have two or one electron which can easily be lost right if you apply heat or if you give energy to to these metal atoms they will easily lose out their valence electrons right due to which they have mobile electrons free mobile electrons right so they have low ionization energies low ionization energies right due to which due to which they can easily lose valence electrons right now since they can easily lose valence electrons we have available valence valence electrons in the crystal lattice of these uh, of these elements right and these this low ionization energy right since due to low ionization energy energy we have these free electrons this low ionization energy promotes strong metallic bonds promotes strong metallic bonding right if you have if you if you remember we have sea of electrons when we learn about metallic bonds we have sea of electrons which are floating in the crystal lattice between the metal at atoms or between the metal ions right so if you have if suppose this is your crystal lattice right and these represents metal atoms which are close to one another right these metal ions are close to one another and they have these electrons moving between these electrons are electrons of the outermost shell right which they easy which these metal atoms easily lose to form these ions right now we say that these free electrons or low ionization energy promotes metal strong metallic bonds if you have these two if you have these two or four say ions and you have electrons flowing everywhere right now this these electrons since this electron will attract this it will attract this similarly this will also attract this and this right now due to this electron these metal ions are held together right because this electron is attracting this ion and this ion right due to which these ions are held together right so they have a bond between one another due to these mobile electrons that is why we say that low ionization energy or free electrons promotes metallic bond right so we have strong metallic bonds due to the presence of these mobile electrons 
right? So we have now strong metallic bonds, right? Just remember. Now metal atoms, these transition metal atoms are strong. They are strong. Now if these metal atoms are strong, right? Their strength indicates the presence of covalent bonds, right? Right? If you remember, diamond is the hardest substance. Diamond is very strong, right? These metals are also hard. They are strong. If you remember, diamond has covalent bonds. It has strong covalent bonds. That is why it is strong. Similarly, these metal atoms also possess covalent bonds, right? Due to which these metals are hard, right? So hardness of these metals, or better, let's write it like this: hardness. The metals, the transition metals are hard. So their hardness is due to covalent bonds. Like diamond, like I said a moment back, like diamond is strong, right, due to the presence of covalent bonds. So these metal atoms are also strong due to the presence of covalent bonds, right. Now the, the covalent bonds in these metal atoms is due to the overlap of d orbitals, right. So whenever you have, uh, this is a little new concept that we are learning that covalent bonding due to overlap of d orbitals right whenever you have d orbitals right you have d orbitals in these metal atoms so d orbitals can overlap right to form covalent bonds right and these covalent bonds makes the metal strong right so due to covalent bonds and covalent bonds covalent bond is due to overlapping of overlapping of d orbitals right now so since covalent bonds makes metal atoms strong right so covalent bond takes place if d orbitals have maximum number of unpaired electrons right so if you have we have maximum of 5 d orbitals right so these types of metal atoms right these types of metal atoms that have all all electrons in the d orbitals unpaired right or those have maximum unpaired electrons maximum unpaired electrons due to these maximum unpaired electrons they form strong covalent bonds right because these singly occupied or unpaired these unpaired orbitals right because you know that or you already know from covalent bonding that when orbitals overlap right one one electrons they will share in covalent bonds sharing of electron takes place due to overlapping of orbitals right so only those orbitals will overlap the that those the possesses your singly occupied orbitals right or unpaired electrons so these kind of elements elements that possesses unpaired electrons right they can form covalent bonds so if you look at the series you have chromium that possesses 5d orbitals i'm sorry they possesses 5 unpaired electrons in d orbitals right so all these 5 electrons can overlap with the metal atoms of with the other metal atoms right to form covalent bonds right so chromium is a hard metal right similarly chromium and the other you have molybdenum right i think the other is um, sorry yeah, chromium molybdenum and tungsten Right, you have chromium, molybdenum, and tungsten. All these have, all these have maximum unpaired d electrons. Maximum unpaired d electrons. 
this kind of configuration right so they can form maximum number of covalent bonds since they can form maximum number of covalent bonds they are hardest these metals are hardest these three metals on the other hand if we look at other metal atoms metal atoms those metal atoms that possesses this type of electronic let me just drop this one. metal atoms possess if they possess all the filled d orbitals these d orbitals are filled right an orbital can have maximum of two electrons and you can see all orbitals have two electrons so these are filled orbitals these are half filled orbitals so this this kind of configuration due to this kind of configuration these orbitals would not be able to form covalent bonds because they already have paired orbit they already have paired electrons right they already have two electrons in the orbital right so they these d orbitals will not overlap to form covalent bonds right so metal atoms or transition elements having this type of d electronic uh, d configuration right for example this zinc d10 right all these are soft metals right all these are soft metals because they cannot form covalent bonds due to the presence of the or due to all the d orbitals filled up right because all the d orbitals all d orbitals are filled right or contains paired electrons the the orbitals are filled so so they cannot they cannot form covalent bonds right because they will not overlap with other d orbitals right to form covalent bonds so they do not form covalent bonds and are soft right and metals of this this these types are zinc cadmium and mercury zinc cadmium and mercury possesses d10 configuration right these elements belong to first second and third transition series right and due to no covalent bonds due to, due to or due to the presence of paired electrons or filled d orbitals they cannot form covalent bonds hence are soft right that is why these elements are soft because they cannot form covalent bonds due to the presence of filled d orbitals right i hope this concept is clear now let's look into the melting point and boiling point right if we talk about melting point and boiling point right let's look at one more thing we have looked into the metallic properties right we have looked into the hardness due to covalent bonding now there is one more thing before looking into this all the metal atoms they have closed packed structure sorry they have closed packed they have closed packed structure when we say closed packed structure it has cubical closed packing hexagonal closed packing right and bcp if you remember we have learned about the structure of solids in solid state in physical chemistry right where we have learned how metal atoms right or how constituent particles are arranged right in a given solid since these transition elements are solid so they have closed pack structure that means when we say closed pack structure these constituent particles are close to one another right their structure is such that their constituent particles are close to one another since they are close to one another so they have high force of attraction right they are tightly bond bonded to one another and we have learned other features also that that due to the presence of metallic bond and these covalent bonds these metal atoms are more strongly held to one another right they are 
strongly bonded to one another right so we have we have uh, metallic bonding strong metallic bonding right let's just write it out here we have strong metallic bond we have strong covalent bond right and these are close these have close packed structures due to these three things the constituent particles are held together right constituent particles are strongly bonded to one another right now since these constituent particles are held together or they are they are strongly bonded to one another they have high melting and boiling point right they have high they have high melting point and boiling point right due to the presence of strong metallic bond and due to the presence of strong covalent bond strong metallic bond results from this these free valence electrons right which can easily be lost due to their low ionization energy and strong covalent bond is due to the presence of unpaired d orbitals right and since they have elements that have maximum number of unpaired d orbitals they can form covalent bonds by overlapping with other d orbitals right so they possesses high melting point and boiling point but there is a trend trend says that melting point and boiling point first increases at tail one point in the series tail chromium melting point and boiling point increases then it still slowly comes down right and two elements manganese and technetium manganese and tc technetium these have abnormally low melting and boiling points right so first let's just understand why melting point and boiling point i'm just write it over here they have that normally let me just write it down that normally low melting point and boiling point right and melting point and boiling point like i said first increases then decreases first increases then decreases what could be the reason that melting point and boiling point it will go something like this first it in, it will increase and then it will decrease this is how the graph will look like since we said that melting point and boiling point right is due to the presence of strong covalent bond as well the strong covalent bond will make these metals hard right and we know that it is difficult to melt a hard solid right since these metals are hard we know the reason that these metals are hard due to the presence of strong covalent bonds and these covalent bonds are due to the presence of unpaired electrons so elements that have more number of unpaired electrons they have strong melting point right or and boiling point if you look at these metals unpaired electrons will keep increasing till this point right so they have the melting point will increase now if you come down this has six electrons right so it's it will look like this the electronic configuration will be look like this three four and five in this case one d orbital will get paired up right now in this case it will form one covalent bond less compared to chromium chromium has maximum five unpaired electrons but iron has it has one d orbital filled up right it has one paired d orbital similarly if you come to this if you come to this metal cobalt it has it has two d orbitals filled up so it will form two covalent bonds less compared to chromium right so as the number of covalent bonds formed by these elements will keep on reducing their hardness will keep on reducing right and less hard metals they have less melting point and boiling point that is why it shows this kind of trend right 
with iron, cobalt, right? All these elements. And if you come down, if you look at the bottom, you have zinc. In zinc, all the d orbitals are filled. Right? Like this. All the d orbitals are filled. Right? When all the d orbitals are filled, that, that means it cannot form a covalent bond. Right? So when it cannot form a covalent bond, that means this, this metal is the soft metal and it will have less melting point and boiling point or minimum melting point and the boiling point in this series. Right? I hope this is clear. So as the number of covalent bonds will increase, right? From if you look at this, it has two so two unpaired electrons in d orbitals so it form two it will form two covalent bonds it will form three covalent bonds it will form five covalent bond so as you come down so till this point covalent bonds are increasing so melting in point and boiling point will keep on increasing so as you come down six seven eight ten here the melting point and boiling point will reduce why because of this trend because of the number of d orbitals number of half filled d orbitals are reducing due to which the number of covalent bonds formed by these metals will reduce hence their hardness will reduce so their melting point and boiling point will go down right i hope this trend is clear now there is something known as enthalpy of atomization right enthalpy of atomization is it, it will be clear to you from here the enthalpy of atomization is the energy required to break the crystal lattice and free up the metal ions or free up the constituent particles that form the metal ion. Right? So enthalpy of atomization for these elements or transition elements would be high. Why? Because of these reasons. Close packed structures, strong metallic bonds and strong covalent bonds. Right? So if you come down, zinc will have less enthalpy of atomization. Why? Because it cannot form, form covalent bonds by overlapping of the orbitals, right? So this metal is less hard. So enthalpy of atomization would be low for it, right? And I hope this is clear. So let me just try to do here. There's something known as enthalpy of atomization, right? Which is the energy required to break the crystal lattice and free the metal atoms, right? And why the enthalpy of atomization is high? Because of the presence of strong metallic bonds, strong covalent bond and close packed structures. Right? I hope this is clear. Thanks.